I'm back. Kids are out of school. I'm back. And you know, I didn't want to get in front of this camera without truly being back. Uh, through the years, uh, at first I used to make videos like pretty much daily, every day. I don't remember how often, but it was always pretty sporadic and I could never quite uh, put out videos as often as I liked. And then, you know, I kind of disappeared from the scene for a while and many of you probably have disappeared as well. But uh, today, I'm officially back. I'm ready to enter the tech gaming slash hardware world once again. I might get into all those like challenges and things that I've faced over the last year and a half or two in another video, but today I just want to get out of all that messy stuff and talk about video cards. Fan was on. Sorry about that. It's been a while. All right, for those of you who haven't been here before, our channel is relatively small. I don't get that many free things, and when it comes to graphics cards, I don't get anything free, okay? So I just have to take the knowledge that I've gleaned from around the internet and bring it here to one place, and we just talk about it. That's what we do here. We talk about that information, help you make purchasing decisions, or if you just like hardware and like talking about hardware, that's what I do. I mean, I look at a ton. Before I do a video like this, I probably read, you know, like 20 or 30 articles, glean through like 20 or 30 videos, and then I bring the best of the best so that you guys have the most up-to-date information. If that's of value to here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And you know, anything we talk about here, you can also leave a comment sec in the comment section below because I'm a little new at this too, admittedly, and I just do my best. But today we're gonna talk about the best graphics cards under $100, and I wanna jump right into that because I really think there's only five graphics cards you should really consider in this price point. These are the GTX 750 Ti, the R7 370, the R7 360, the GTX 950, and the all-new RX 460. In this category, there's a wide range of prices, and a lot of it has to do with rebates. So if you can find a good rebate, a lot of times you can get one of the higher-end graphics cards here, like the RX 460 or the R7 370, for just about the same price as a 750 Ti or an R7 360. For that reason, I would take those, uh, those graphics cards and basically just chuck them out the window. They didn't consider them unless you can get them in like the $70 range. I was actually able to find an R7 370 for around $90. Now I'm going to bring up a graph here that shows you kind of the low price and the average price of all these graphics cards. Now for me, I would just go straight for the low price here and uh, look at something like the R7 370, which I think probably provides the best value as of right now. But if you look at the average prices, the 370, the 460, and the 950 are all about the same. And rightfully so, because they provide just about the same amount of FPS in most games. Now, how big of a difference is it? Well, if you take the four gigabyte version of the 460 and compare it to the, the 370 and the GTX 950, it beats out the 370 by about 4%, and the 950 by about 1%. You go down to two gigabytes, the two gigabyte version of the 460, it really evens out some. You lose a few frames per second. I'm gonna put all this in the description below, you know, where I get my information. So, you know, if you guys are wondering, I'm saying all this, there's sources in the description below. I didn't do all this testing again, but this is just, this is just a fact. This is out there, and you can find all the information tested in the description. So, Back to the R7 370, the 460, and the GTX 950, which are our main thoughts here in the $100 price tag. Uh, the R7 370 is, of course, a steal at $90, but if you don't want the Asus Strix cards that I'm gonna put in the description that's for that price range, really, it could be any one of these three. Now, keep in mind that uh, Digital Foundry, again, in the description, so keep that in mind. I'm just gonna mention it a few times this video. won't keep doing that, but uh, the GTX 950 is going to work better with a lesser CPU. That's a fact. So if you've got something like a Pentium or an Athlon X2 or whatever, you know, or, or an older processor, you might want to consider the GTX 950 because it's just going to perform just a little bit better. Now, if you've got anything like an i3-6100 Skylake, it's probably going to be fairly similar in terms of performance. In terms of efficiency, the RX 460 is more efficient than an overclocked, say, GTX 950, about 10 watts more efficient. But compared to those like uh, factory low voltage GTX 950s, the 950 is more efficient by about 20 watts. So if you live in a place where, you know, per kilowatt hour, your price is just super expensive, that might be something to consider as well. Overall this month though, I really like the R7 370 and the $90 price range with a $30 rebate. 
or if you've got your pick between the three, you know, and I had an R7 370, I had an RX 460, it certainly would be difficult not to go with the newer product. That's really all I have to say today, pretty short video, but make sure you comment in the comment section below. You go to uh, Twitter at Top10Gamer and let me know what you think about this video or others that I've made. And you can also follow me on Facebook uh, at Top10Gamer, facebook.com slash Top10Gamer. Also go to our website at Top10Gamer.com where I post articles before any of these videos go up. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.